We glorify your name. We lift you up, Lord, above everything, Lord. And uh, tonight, Lord, for this Wednesday night um, summer series session, Lord, we pray, Lord, that all minds will be clear, that our hearts, Lord, will be follow ground for your word that will be deposited onto it this tonight, Lord. We pray, Lord, that the word that is spoken uh, tonight, Lord, it will bear great fruit forward, Lord, uh, that the shackles of debt will be broken in our lives, in our families' lives, and in the next generation, and a generation, and in a generation, and a generation after that, Lord, yes. that we will be found as good men, Lord, that leave an inheritance for our children's children, Lord. We lift up the name of Jesus, Lord, and we know, Lord, that we can do all things that, strength, uh, uh, that, that through Christ who strengthens us, Lord. So strengthen us now in this hour, Lord. Strengthen us now in this hour, Lord. Strengthen our minds in this, in this hour right now, Lord. Give us the faith the size of a mustard seed, Lord, to move mountains, Father. Mountains like debt, Lord, or, or health or health scares or anything that's going on, Lord. You've given us the um, faith the size of a mustard seed to move mountains, Lord. So we pray, Lord, as we begin to um, jump into the finances for life, learning how to break the shackles of debt and yeah. save for tomorrow, Lord, that the shackles will be truly be broken, Lord, because you have give, given us the yoke-destroying, burden-removing power, Lord, um, that lives within us, Father. So we thank you this evening, Lord, and we pray, Lord, um, that your word, Lord, would just come forth, Lord, and spring life into us, Father. We thank you and praise you for this. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's get into this, y'all. I already mentioned the, uh, the title of the um, teaching tonight. Last week we talked about budgeting, having a minority mindset. We're going to continue that theme and having the minority mindset when it comes to our finances for life, when it comes to learning how to break the shackles of debt and how to save for tomorrow. Um, and it's very important, you know, that we learn this, you know, and uh, in America, like I mentioned last week, you know, we, we have a culture that this is driven by debt. You know, from the GDP to the way our government uses the money, we, we're running a national deficit and stuff like that, you know. And with all these bright minds and very intelligent people we have running the, uh, the world, you would think that uh, there was just, there's some type of secret that's keeping us uh, bound and we can't break these shackles of debt. But I'm gonna let you guys, I'm gonna let you guys know tonight, breaking the shackles of debt is not a secret. It's really not. Let's get into the Word of God. And that's where, where our congressmen, economists, and all these people, but let me get back to the Word of God. Amen. In 1 Timothy um, 6, verse 6, I'm going to read this in full and completion. Now, godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Having food and clothing, with these um, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich, fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. We need to have the minority mindset, y'all. That, that scripture kind of speaks to me like, we need to have the minority mindset. We need to, min we need to think differently than the world. We're, we're salt, we're the salt of the earth. You know, uh, we have the word living in us. That's the light, the light to the world. Uh, the word of God is telling us here, you know, culture and society tells us what success looks like. If you go watch TV and stuff like that, they're saying you've got to have the Bentley, you've got to have the Hermes belt, you've got to have the Lululemon well, yoga pants, whatever they got. You've got to have the Xbox Series X, little Brad. You've got, you got to have the PlayStation 5, little Brad. You've got, you got to have all this stuff to look like you're rich. Yeah. Amen. When the word of God is saying all we need is God, Godliness with contentment is great gain. Amen. He's our provider. He's Jehovah provider. He's the one who, who gives us the ability to even obtain wealth. If we're looking at the world of how to get rich, we're looking at it the wrong way. We need to look at it with the minority mindset. Let me get back to the word of God. You know, we're trying to look rich, but we're God poor. Mm. You know, uh, lusting for things to make us feel good. Um, while, while, meanwhile, we're drowning in debt trying to look rich. Mm. You know, and it talks about this in the, in the word, you know, those who desire to fall, uh, to be rich, fall into temptation in a snare. It's the structure, it's, 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 it's the structure, it's pulling us away from God. The snare, it's, it's got us. Now we gotta work nine to five to pay Macy's, Visa, Amazon, all these people. You know, uh, you know the word perdition, it says, uh, let me see where is it here. Destruction and perdition. The perdition can be defined as loss of the soul or eternal damnation. Do you want to have the loss of your soul because you want to get a new Lexus LC500H? We know somebody who got one of those. It's like a $100,000 car. 
You know, what profits a man like, to, to gain the world but lose his soul? We need to understand that true satisfaction comes from God. Ecclesiastes um, 5 verse 10 says, He who loves silver will not be satisfied with silver, nor he who loves abundance with increase. This is also vanity. I know everybody's trying to get the bag. We try, we, we trying to start businesses. We trying to leave the heritage for our children's children. But we gotta remember, you know, it could be it, it gets to a point where it's vain. Amen. Then it's like I'm getting all this stuff for me. Right. I'm getting all this stuff. I, I say it's for my kids, but it's really for me. It's for me. It's, hey, man, look at my bank account, man. Look at that. There's six figures in there, man. It becomes vain. Now, Galatians. Um, we gotta remember when we're trying to go after the bag. Uh, there's no problem going through the bag. It's all about your, um, let me see, your motives. Amen. You're trying to bless somebody. You're trying to bless your grandmother. You're trying to bless your son. You're trying to bless your kids. You're trying to bless your church. Amen. You're trying to bless your community. In Galatians 5, 7, it says, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? The, this persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. So this with that being said, just be careful in your pursuits and, uh, you know, in, in business, entrepreneurship, whether you're going to school to get a degree, become a doctor and all that stuff and make lots of money. Remember, you know, um, um, remember what the, 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 the word of God says. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Be content with what you have, but also, you know, still be hungry to get more things like Paul says, but at the same time, have content. Don't, don't let it get to your heart where you're just, oh, I got to get the money. Amen. Now, Let's talk about the elephant in the room. TJ, you see the elephant? There he is. The elephant in the room is debt. That's not the elephant. The elephant in the room is, is debt. It's, you know, we're talking about debt. You don't know, no, um, now, we're not talking about the devil because he sure is busy. But, you know, we all have had or have debt. You know, uh, a, a little five hundred dollar credit card could turn into ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand, forty, fifty thousand dollars worth of debt. People going out buying houses now for inflated costs, debt. You know, we try to keep up with the Joneses. Credit card companies offering to increase our limits. Hey, you just pay off this little five hundred dollar card. Let's approve you for five thousand dollars. You know, a lot of people in America now are financing their lifestyles instead of saving for stuff the old-fashioned way to get it. Amen. Everybody's offering credit cards. You know, if you see Samuel Jackson, what's in your wallet? Everybody knows the commercials. They're trying to program us to get us to think like the world. We need to have the minority mindset. Amen. You know, um, and sometimes we get so much debt, even if we wanted to buy something, we can't do it because we got too much debt to even pay for, to save and pay for it. So we need to put before, you know, before we, we, got, we have to put together a savings plan and then we have to eliminate debt. And we're going to talk about that today. You know, um, by show of hands, I'll ask a rhetorical question. Maybe not rhetorical. But who, how many people in the room think that being in sin is a debt? I'm sorry, being, being in debt is a sin. Yeah. You think so? Hmm. Now, it's not a sin. I didn't find anywhere in the word of God that said being in debt is a sin, but sometimes it can feel that way. You know, God has in his word, he warns us about um, being in debt and the consequences of being in debt. Like the borrower is going to be saved, slave to the lender, all, all this stuff like this. But he doesn't necessarily say it's a sin because sometimes in the word, the word of God also says the poor will be with you always. Now, it doesn't say you have to be poor, but there's going to be some poor folk among you that made bad decisions want to finance their lifestyles, want to live, you know, think the world way, and, then, and now they're poor, you know. So it's not necessarily a sin, but, but that can cause stress. It can cause anxiety. It can even cause medical issues. You can have high blood pressure thinking about how I'm going to rob Peter to pay Paul and maybe how I'm going to literally rob Peter to pay Paul type things, blood pressure, you know. And uh, in First Timothy six it says, "For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith and their greediness and pierced themselves with many sorrows." You know, I don't. Maybe it's not the love of money that's the root of all kinds of evil. 
perhaps it's the lack of money mm. that's the root of all, kind, of all evil, you know. Uh, we got to understand, and I wish I had a brick or something, money is amoral. It doesn't care about you or me, you know. It's, it's amoral. Money it gets exchanged. As soon as people get their money, they, they exchange the visa. As soon as they get their money, you know, you can do whatever you want to do. You can build a church with the building fund. You can go out and buy some guns. You can go out and buy some drugs. You can go buy some alcohol. You can go and buy whatever you want. You can buy food. Money is amoral. It's, it's a tool. Um, you know, when we lack money, sometimes we may be willing to do immoral things to get it. Things that are not of God to get the money. I'm going to go out there and hustle, be the dope boy. So, which can lead us into sin. That's why I said that that in and of itself is not necessarily a sin. But when you lack money, you might be willing to do some strange things to get some money. So, and um, let me read this, this into your hearing. Here, Hebrews 12, verse 1 says, Therefore, since we are also... We also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Let me uh, explain something to you guys. I did this last week to it. I like to use uh, illustrations. This is my wallet. You know, I could have a de uh, a American Express. It's a company credit card here. This little thing can be a weight. And invisible, you may go and log into your website, you may see an insurmountable number, a mountain of debt, mm. and it can weigh you down. And it can get you to the place where I don't got time to come to church because I got to pay off this card. I got to pay off this card. I got to pay off this card. I got to pay all these cards off. And um, it can become a shackle. Because guess what, guys? the interest rates are only going to go up. Now, interest rates for credit cards are already ridiculous. Like 21, 23%, I've seen some as high as 29% interest. You can go out and spend $500 on a credit card and end up taking you 10 years to pay it off if you're gonna make the minimum payment. Well, we're gonna talk about eliminating debt, breaking the shackles of debt. But these little cards can become weights that can ultimately end you up, end, end you up in an immoral place trying to get some money. Um, and, you know, and the debt can affect our witness. When we come to church and we got to worry about paying this bill, that bill, that bill, when pastors say raise your hands, you ain't thinking about raising your hands. You think about, I need to hurry to get off. When I get out of church, I need to go over here and do this, do this, do this, flip this, flip this, flip this, and get, and get this money. I, I can't praise God right now. You know, it can affect your witness because, you know, so it says, therefore, since we are also surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, people are watching how we walk. And sometimes they may not know that it's your financial situation that's having you down in the dumps, you know. But uh, think about these things. I want to get into the mindset first before we get into the tools. You know, in order to break the shackles of debt, like in Hebrews 12, 1, it's going to take endurance, y'all. Like I said, some of these credit cards got double-digit interest rates. And it's going to take endurance to be able to hunker down and pay that thing off in less than a year, two years, three years, four years, five years. It may take you five years to get completely debt free. You gotta have endurance. It's going to take discipline, intestinal fortitude, as pastor likes to call it. You gotta do the right thing even when you're, you're like, I don't wanna let go of this money, I just got this money. Yeah. Well, I got this extra five, let me go ahead and pay that thing off. Intestinal fortitude. It's gonna take consistency. When, when we work, we're gonna work out a plan with you guys tonight. And when you um, make the plan, you've got to stay consistent with the plan. We're going to talk about how to be consistent and set static numbers. Okay, for this card, I'm paying 50 bucks a month. For this card, I'm paying 200 a month. For this card, I'm paying $300 a month until that one's paid off. We're going to get into the details of that. But we need to learn how to use money as a tool. The world, they, they know how to do it, especially these financial institutions. They know exactly how to do it. They got these ARR, or annual rate of return, and all this stuff, interest rates, and all that. They know how to play the game. But, you know, most of us, like I said, us sitting in this class, most of us, we know what to do. We know we shouldn't be going out and spending money on the credit cards or, get, or, or, or you know, going out and buying stuff that we know we can barely afford. We know what to do, but we don't do it. 
We know we should be saving money for our retirement. We know we should be putting the money away for savings. We know we should be paying our tithe. We know we should be putting the offering for the, the offering in, giving the money to the building fund, doing all this stuff, but we don't do it. You know, um, listen to Paul. This is very important because sometimes we know what to do, but we don't. In Romans 7, verse 15, it says, for what, I, for what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice, but what I hate, that I do. If, then, I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that is good, but now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, nothing good dwells, for it is for to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. You know, I know what to do to get out of debt. You know, but I don't understand why I keep racking up this bill, this bill, this bill, this bill, this bill. So like Paul was saying in the scripture, I hate being in debt, but I got to have those new Jordans. I hate, I, hate, I hate it. Our flesh doesn't want to sacrifice. Our flesh wants this everything right now. We got to get to a point where we make our flesh submit to the mind, to the spirit, to the body. Mm -hmm. so we need, we, it, needs to, it needs to submit to us. We need to get to the point where we say, in, like in Romans, four, um, seven, four, um, verse 20, uh, verse, Romans 7, verse 24 says, O wretched man I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Christ Jesus, our Lord. We need to come to God, y'all. You can sit here, listen to me talk about debt, breaking the shackles and stuff like that, but we don't get our flesh under control, we always gonna be in debt. Breaking the shackles of debt, just like following Christ Jesus, is gonna require obedience. We gotta submit ourselves to Jesus Christ as a new creation. You know, we're, we're no longer racking up debt. You know, some of you may not be debt free here, but I just wanna speak that into your, your mindset anyways. It's gonna require obedience. Now, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. I've done some radical things. My wife may or may not like it. I told her, I uh, forget how many years ago it was, I'm never having a credit card. I'm never going to use a credit If I want to buy something, I'm going to buy it with cash. I'm going to save up, and even if I got a credit card, I, I, truth be told, I, 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 I don't, I shouldn't even, I'm not even bragging about this stuff, but I got enough credit cards to buy a cheap house. Now, they all pay but one. But I probably got up six figures in credit cards that I could use and buy whatever I want. But I don't, I'm, 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 I'm taking control of my flesh and I'm saying, just because I can swipe the card and get it now, I don't need to get it now. I can wait. And then well, if I wait, I probably can get it what I want it for a discount. And then sometimes I might buy something like, man, you know, Buyer's more. So I, I didn't even want that. Or I might buy a computer part and be like, six months later, they got a new one out. It's 30% it's faster. Oh my God, I didn't waste all this money on this. Now, um, let's get into this, y'all. I don't want to move too fast. But when we submit ourselves to Christ, we become a new creation. When we submit our finances over to Christ, it, it's a game changer. And it was a game changer for me. Because I remember I told y'all last class, uh, I was not a tither. And then the game changed when I submitted my finances over to Christ. I was like, okay, Lord, how am I going to uh, pay 10% and still have the other 90% to live off on? And then, you know, and God kept challenging me with more and more and more. First it was like, okay, Todd, God telling me, now you can pay 10%. Now, pastor comes to church with a word. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Here I go again. It's endurance. I, I, he's getting my intestinal for What do you mean? I just started tithing, Lord. A good inheritance for children. I, I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to live with 90% now. Now, you submit yourself to Christ. You become a new creation. Okay, all right. We're going to figure this out. We're going to cut here. We're going to cut here. We're going to cut here. You know, we're going to have to reduce our lifestyle so that we can be able to save money, too. You don't want to just live off your 90%. So I got the, you know, the 80-20 the rule. We live off of 80% of your income. You give 10%. You save 10%. Put it away. We're going to get into all, all these um, savings and funds and all this stuff soon. Um, but, you know, therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. 
my mind transformed on finances and then I started seeking after, you know, godly uh, men and women who knew more about finances than I did. And I would submit myself to them like, hey, how do you do this? And I would watch YouTube videos and Dave Ramsey and Dan Celia and a whole bunch of other people. Uh, even people that were non-Christian that, that were talking sound financial stuff. And I was like, how do I get this together? How do I get, get it so organized? Where is this a well? Because right now my finance is a well oil machine. I can tell you what I got in my account down to the penny. And if a penny moves, oh, where'd that come from? Oh, that was an interest payment from uh, such, okay. So we gotta, be, we gotta revolutionize the way we do our finances. Now, debt can give people a bad name. Um, you can't go get an apartment. You can't get no utilities turned on for your house. You, if you wanted to go get out there and purchase a vehicle or purchase a house, you, it can, that can give you a bad name. And I'm gonna give you guys five benefits uh, having a good name, what having a good name does for you. Because in Proverbs 21, verse one, it says, a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, loving favor rather than silver and gold. I like what Pastor says about this too. Because, you know, if you, uh, a good name, you know, is rather be chosen rather than great riches. Imagine if you had a million friends that would give you a dollar. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine if you got a million enemies. They're going to be after you. you. You done took my money. You done, you done did me wrong. You done hoodwinked that booze me and did some immoral stuff so you can get some money. But a good name to be chosen rather than great riches. Because it opens up doors. It gives us favor, loving favor, rather than silver and, rich and, and, and gold. Now... The first point it gives us, the first benefit it gives us having a good name, we have more negotiating power. Amen. We can negotiate for a lower interest rate on our house. We can negotiate for a lower interest rate when we go out and, and, and get that car. When we go to the car dealership, we can be like, hey, they can be like, oh, would you like to sign for our finances? No, no. I already got um, pre-approved, like, uh, 0% interest, uh, I already got the money. <laughs> Let me get that one right there. Right. A good name, you know, you got negotiating power. You know, uh, they look at, when, they, when, you, when I talk about the, a good name, when you go to sign up for something, they're looking at your debt to income ratio. Now, um, this is what they do. Um, they take your monthly debt and your um, gross income. They divide, the, they divide your monthly um, debt by your income and if it's over 43%, you say you got 43% or, or, or greater than 40, say, say 60% of um, monthly, uh, if you got debt, that's more than 60% of your income. Let's do, let's do, a, let's keep it simple. You make $1,000 a month. Let's keep it real simple. Nobody makes, no, I don't even say nobody. Some people probably make $1,000 a month. Imagine if $600 was spoken for and you only got $400. Do you think they're gonna let you walk out with that car or with that house? They're looking at your debt um, to income ratio and, and your debt to income ratio, this is an important number, you may wanna go home and do this. You may wanna tally up what's all my expenses. Then you may wanna tally up what's our total monthly income, husband, wife, or if you're by yourself, what's my total monthly income? You wanna divide all your expenses by how much you make and whatever that percentage is, if it's greater than 43%, you need to cut some debt. You need to get below 43%. You know, if you're at 43%, you borderline. We're going we gonna to approve you, but we're going to give you a high interest rate right. because you're high risk. Right. Right. But if, you got, if you're lower than 40%, 43% debt, so, you know, you, you, you make $1,000, let's say $10,000, whatever it is, and you only got $3,000 worth of debt. Now I got $7,000 of positive income I can use to buy whatever I want. Now we're gonna give you a lower interest rate because you are a good steward over your money. It doesn't matter if you make $1,000 or you make $10,000 a month. It's a principal thing about the debt to income ratio. Um, so that's number one. You got negotiating power for uh, benefit for having a good name. Um, the second benefit for having a good name, um, well, it's kind of plays in the same thing. Easier approval for rentals and um, houses and apartments, uh, which is kind of, I should have um, looked over that better. Third benefit, you avoid security uh, deposits on utilities. You got a good name, they may say, hey, you know, we're gonna waive that $100 act, uh, you know, deposit or, or fee, activation fee. Uh, fourth um, benefit for having a good name, you can more easily find a job. Some of these companies ain't playing. 
Now, a lot of people work for themselves now, but if you, if you, uh, you, you, know, you go out there and get a job for one of these big corporations, say, for example, you know, uh, Brad, call your, your wife out, Carmen. She's in the finance sector. She goes to work for, um, you know, uh, Fidelity or TD Ameritrade. They're going to be looking into y'all's y'all record like, oh, hold up. Y'all got like seven, you know, y'all yeah, doing well. But, you know, they're they, they going to look at the, if your name is good, you got that job. Right. Or they might, I can trust you around all this money. If you got a bad name and your debt, you know, the income ratio is looking bad and then you got all these bills, they be like, man, we can't trust this dude driving the Brinks truck. He about to take the Brinks truck. <laughs> I just, I've seen the movies. I thought about it too. <laughs> now, the fifth reason, uh, fifth benefit for having a good name, lower insurance rates. You want, you want to go get a, a car, motorcycle, whatever, you know, you got a good name, you're going to get lower rates. And... Most of all, we got the favor of God behind us, God's people. Sometimes people bless you for no reason, you don't even know what it is, but it's, it's God. They can see it all over you. Now, breaking the shackles of debt, we're going to get into this, y'all. It's going to require something. It's going to require us to see, to see ourselves as God sees us. Amen. Some of us think, man, I ain't never getting out of debt. Every time I think about getting out of debt, something come up, something happens. I'm always going to be in debt. God doesn't see us that way. In 1 Peter um, 2, verse 9, it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness, debt, into his marvelous light, prosperity. We must ask ourselves these two, these two questions. First question, if you're going to break the shackles of debt, ask yourself these questions. Where do you see yourself financially in the next six months to a year from now? We've got to ask ourselves these questions. And even if you're not in debt, this, goes, this could be applied to everybody. This is a principal thing. It's about setting your um, family up to, be, uh, to leave an inheritance for your children's children. Where do you see yourself at financially the next six months to a year from now? You know, people who are rich and wealthy, they're planning their stuff out by generations. They're, they're planning stuff out, they, they years into the game. You know, um, they are already setting up the, this, this so-and-so is gonna have this, so-and-so this, gonna have this, when I, when I move on, and blah, 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 blah. Where do you see yourself, and I'm, I'm gonna give you an easy one, six months to a year from now. I told you last week, I got my budget set all the way out to 2024, two years from now. I already know what's going to be in the account. I already know things planned out, you know. And uh, part of the reason I did this, and we'll get to that soon, because uh, we're planning for milestone events and that's happening in our life. And now when you have children, if you don't have children, uh, still you want to plan your life. You don't want your life to plan for you. Uh, you know, we got, we got some, you know, and all this stuff. We, we got to make sure the TJ is set for the future and stuff like that. So where do you see yourself six months or a year from now? How much liability will you have paid off in six months? Liability is debt. How many credit cards are you gonna pay off in the next six months to a year from now? You know, will you have only have two debts, five debts? How many are you gonna have? You know, will you be completely debt free in the year? Look at think think about these things because the word of God says that he he, you know, he doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but you know, power, love, and a sound mind. You know, he gives us, you know, a future and a hope, something to look forward to. When you start talking about finance, don't have to be stressful. It can be very positive, and you can think about what is going to be happening in the future. Second question that you need to ask yourself when we break the shackles of debt, how are you going to get there? Some of us don't know how we're going to get there. Some of us don't have the education on how to, you know, do a debt snowball, which we're going to go over that today. And people will watch Dave Ramsey, which is he's one of my favorite guys. Some people don't like him. He gets some flat because some of us, they, like, he, he's basically... Um, finances for people who are really bad with money. Now, I, I've, I've studied over the years. I'm seeing, I've seen like some of this stuff. Like, okay, that's elementary. I'm, I'm, I'm beyond that now. But I learned the principles from him. I was like, hey, this is where I'm gonna start. Baby step one, baby step two, and there's there's a, there's a lot of other ways to do it to actually get free quicker. But Dave Ramsey's way psychologically gets people who are not really good with money to be, get better with money and actually get debt free. Um, but uh, 
I say that with you know, the, the grain of salt. You know, he's a good guy. But he, 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 some people be saying some weird stuff about him. He, he's good, but he got me turned on to finances. So I, I looked him up and said, hey, man, hey, how, how do I do this? And I would listen to his podcast, hear people call in and be talking about, hey, I, I'm, I'm 200000 I'm $1 million in debt, this, this, and that. And, he, and he'll give them, like, sound advice straight, cut to the, you know, the, cut to the quick, stop, go sell their car, do this, da, 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 you know, whatever, you know. But listening to those um, people calling would inspire me. I'm like, man, I ain't really got that bad. Let me figure this thing out. Right, right. Some people call, they, they got it bad, you know. But I digress. Second question is, how are you going to get there? The man's not holding you back, you know, or he's not telling you how you need to get ahead, you know. The, the man ain't doing nothing. We, we live in a technological age now. I got this iPad sitting here. I got this cell phone. We got the power of free YouTube and libraries and all this stuff. You can go Google something. You can figure out derivatives and the SP5. You can figure out anything you want now. Ain't nobody holding you back but yourself. All the information that's out there to get that free is, is there. Remember, it requires discipline, obedience, intestinal fortitude, you know, and endurance to get out of, out of debt, to break these shackles of debt. But we got to ask ourselves those two questions. Remember, I'll, I'll say it again. Where do you, where you see yourself six months to a year from now? And then question two, how are you going to get there? Now, James, um, if, if, if for some odd reason, you're not getting what I'm saying in this class, everything I'm saying going over your head. I, I just don't get it, Todd. I, I, can't, I can't figure out this debt thing, man. Go back to the word of God. In James 1, verse 5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God who gives to all liberally without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. It's important that we uh, ask God in faith how we're going to get out of this situation that we, we may be in. Um, and don't have any doubt. Believe um, with all your heart that, you know, you can, get, you can become debt free. Mm -hmm. You can become wealthy. You can become, you can be, you can become successful. You can, be, you can get to a point where you are a blessing um, to your church, to your people, to your community. You can get to a place, but have the right motives in mind. And uh, if you lack wisdom, ask God. And I ask God. How do, I, how, do I, how do I start trading stocks? Lord, point me in direction. And one day I was driving to work, and I, usually I'm on 104.9 in the river, then I, I hit a button on my car, and then it went to some random uh, radio station that was like a uh, like right-wing uh, political thing. Yeah, then, then I ran to Dan Celia and stuff like that. Like, oh, man, like this dude is talking truth. And he's like, he's like coming from the scripture and stuff with um, the stocks and stuff, and he's, he's not playing around. He's talking about how to invest and companies that are biblically sound. I'm like, man, I like this guy. And then I, I paid the hundred dollars for the year and, and I read all this stuff on how to invest and everything. And I learned how to manage my own portfolio through Dan Celia. Now, God rest his soul, he passed away a couple months ago, but the dude poured into me so much information via podcast. And I invested in his ministry. I was like, man, let me invest in your ministry to see, see there are companies out there that are on the public sector that are biblically responsible. And if, but if a company's not biblically responsible, he will send you an email, hey, sell their stock right now. They're off my watch, they're off my list. Sell them, sell them immediately. He would have um, conference calls and everything when you paid to get on this thing. I mean, it was, it was wonderful. I was like, man, you know, God will, will, will lead you to the people. And I was like, this is, the, this is right. You know, because there's a whole bunch of other people there selling mumbo jumbo, um, you know, yeah. things. Hey, you, you want to get rich? You want to find the next Amazon, this, this, and this? Pay this thing for a month and they, they ain't give you no, no real solid information. And he was real, he was like, hey, you ain't gonna make money fast in the stock market. It's not a, a, a fast man's game, you gotta have endurance. And, and, and taught how to do it the right way. And I've le learned quite a bit from him. Um, let's get into the nuts and bolt, bolts of debt elim 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 elimination. First, as we mentioned previously, it starts with the plan. Proverbs 15, verse 22, it says, this is the NIV version, plans fail for lack of counsel. But with many advisors, they succeed. You know, God has given us his word. He's given us his people. I mentioned Dan Celia and um, Dave Ramsey. You know, he uh, pastor. You know, he, he says some words across the pool. But like, man, I ain't doing, man, I, I, I need to. He, he's pastor say some stuff like, you know, when I, I, I get my, uh, if I start a new job, I'm going to get my first whole paycheck. You know, Brad mentioned that. I'm like, man, I ain't there yet, pastor. No, no. 
let me get in a job and as an AWS solution architect somewhere making it I, I, I will get my first paycheck. I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to do it. If, if, hey, God will, I'm, I'm going to do it. I said it on tape. It's, it's on tape. But it starts with a plan, y'all. A plan is only good if you have the faith to follow it. Uh, you know, and um, again, I learned these two baby steps. I won't go through all of them from Dave Ramsey. Baby step one, part of the plan, first part of the plan. Get some type of emergency fund. Now, back in the day when Dave wrote this, it was get $1,000 in an emergency fund as fast as you humanly possibly can. Sell something, go cut some grass, go edit the video, cut somebody's hair, do, some, do somebody's hair. Get $1,000 in an emergency fund. But these days, with the rising cost of inflation, realistically, you may have to get two or $3,000 in an emergency fund. Everybody's emergency fund is going to be different depending on how much money you make. But you, we need to have some money in case there's an emergency because there's all like today. It's raining. You know, you got, you got your umbrella in your car, your emergency fund. I'm good. It's raining. All right. All right. Well, well, well you know, I'll, I'll pay the little thousand dollar thing. My car broke down, this, this, and that. Get the emergency fund. Uh, you know, um, baby step two. Now, this is where we really get into the nuts and bolts. Once you get your emergency fund, Step two, and see people on stream, they probably know this, people follow Dan, uh, Dave Ramsey, create a debt snowball plan. What is a debt snowball? And uh, this is review for some people. A debt snowball, and TJ, you know what a snowball is? Um, a, a snowball. It, it, it starts small. It starts small. Say you, uh, you make a couple thousand dollars a month, and you got an extra $200 uh, that you can put towards a debt. Dave Ramsey's plan goes like this, and I wish I had a, a dry erase marker, but basically, you got five debts. One debt is only $25 a month. One debt is only 50 bucks a month, or maybe say one debt is only $200 for the whole debt. The next debt's $500. The next debt is um, $3,000. The next debt is $10,000. That little $200 debt, you got an extra $200, but you're paying a little $15 a month on that little $200 debt. It's going to take you a couple years to pay off $200 worth of debt. You're playing around with it. This is a debt snowball. You, you take that, your extra $200 from your couple of thousand dollars you make per month, take that extra $200 and pay it towards that $200 debt and knock it out. Then you work on the next debt that's like $500, whatever it is. Now you was making a minimum payment on, say, $500 debt. Say you're you paying 80 bucks a month. It's gonna take you a couple years to pay off that $500 debt. Why not take that $200 and 15, whatever you're just putting towards that small debt and roll it to the next debt? And now that when that $500 debt is gone, now let's look at that $5,000 giant. I got, now, we, now we got an extra like $300 a month because now the, uh, the small debts aren't siphoning the little bit of money here and there. Because th these little small debts, the little 11, 11 is the whole lump. Lay aside every weight that the sin that so easily ensnares you. See, these little debts, they can add up. But once you start to build the momentum with the snowball, you pay off that $200 debt, you pay off that $500 debt, now you're looking at that $5,000 joker. And you got an extra $400 to your name now. You could pay it off so much faster using the, um, the debt snowball method that was created by Dave Ramsey. And um, eventually you'll get to a place where you've got an extra $1,000 a month of net income. How long do you think it's going to take you to pay off a $10,000 debt with the extra, with the big snow, $1,000 snowball? It'll take you 10 months. And now you pay off that, that $10,000 debt. That might be your car. That may be some crazy thing that happened at your house that you had to get fixed. Now that that's paid off, now you got an extra $1,500 a month. What can you do with that now? If something comes, little Brad, you want a PlayStation 5? Now, 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 now Daddy Brad, he got an extra $2,000 in, in, in his pocket because he ain't paying no more debt. Well, I, I can go ahead and get you that PS5, you know. You know, oh, Amazon, click once, buy with, with his money, not, not with no credit card because he done use a snowball to pay off the, uh, all the debts and build the momentum. Um, now, this is the second alternative snowball. Um, Dave Ramsey's snowball is you pay off the smallest debt first and then you work your way up to the biggest debt. You build your snowball. Um, another methodology is still a snowball, but it's altered. Um, interest kills us. High interest credit cards, 
you mess around and pay the little $200 debt off, maybe it has a, a low interest rate. But maybe that, that uh, $5,000 one has an interest rate of 29%. You make an $80 payment, they make an interest charge of like $60. So really, you only made a $20 payment with 80 bucks. You may want to alter your snowball and be like, all right, I'm going to pay off the debts with the highest interest first. And by the time you get to the ones with the lowest interest, you would save yourself money over time because over time, interest payments keep adding up, adding up, adding up, and, you'll, and it'll be insurmountable and it'll feel like you can't get out of debt. So the second methodology is to pay it off high interest debt first, not, the, not the necessarily the largest debt first, high interest. Those are two snowball methods. Um, and we probably can't see this on stream. And um, if you guys want a copy of this, I can shoot you an email. This is a sheet that I made. Um, this is an example of a snowball. Now, at the top, it's got, uh, let's see here, total debts. So these are the total prices of debt. This is the minimum payment that people are making. Mm. Now, if you look down here, when uh, they uh, increase the snowball payments or more, so you, you can increase the snowball payment and pay it off faster. And then over here, this column shows you how many months it will take you to pay everything off. So you want to write the, the vision, make it plain on tablets so that he that sees it can run with it. And it's very simple, um, and I know I'm getting out of frame, but they can still hear me on the stream. But yeah, there's your total debts, your minimum payment, the monthly payoff, how many years it would take you to pay it off, the total number of years it would take you to pay off if you make the minimum payment. It would take you 31 years to pay that, that debt off, that little bit of debt. If you do this debt snowball method, it would take you only nine years to pay that off, 9.4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 5 years. They won't have they won't have it this clean. They 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 put so many numbers at you and stuff like that. They make you overwhelmed and make you feel like I I can't pay all this stuff off. List it up. Let's let's line it up straight straight down the middle, from the biggest debt to the smallest debt. Then go say okay, here's my minimum payment. Divide that by um, the, uh, the the total amount, and they'll tell you how many months it's going to take you to pay that thing off. And then start playing around with numbers. But all right, I get this extra money. I, if I take my extra money and put it towards this other payment. Now, how many, how many months is it going to take me to pay it off? And if I add that to the next one, how long is it going to take me to pay it off? And then you cumulatively add up all the, the, the months, and it will tell you in, in years, or a year, or less, how long it will take you to pay it off. But that takes radical planning and submission and obedience and, and everything I said to pay that stuff off. You've got to look it in the eyes. You know, you can't be afraid. You know, uh, you know, and if you are afraid, just look at it anyway. Like, We're going to do this. You know, yep. look it in the eye, and, and you're gonna do and knock it out. But once you once you see it, it becomes clear. You go, okay, I can easily see if I can I can pay that off. I can pay it off. Maybe I might even go how do how someone do this this nest and pay it off real quick. Boom, knock it out. Now um, we do that because we don't want to be paying off debt for 31 years. You know, live like no one else today. This is Dave Ramsey's quote: Live like no one else today, so that you can live like no one else tomorrow. When you radicalize your finances and you, and you be like, hey, we about to sacrifice. We about to pay this stuff off. Now you can live like no one else tomorrow because now you, you've got money in your pocket. You can do things with cash. You don't have to worry about going in debt. You can't worry about paying all these bills. You know, it's going to take a sacrifice. Um, it will require radical obedience. And as my wife says, I don't want to leave this out. It's going to require some balance because I can get hardcore. I'm be like, hey. <laughs> We ain't going on no trips. We ain't, we, this is the Christmas budget right here, but we only got $200 for Christmas. The whole Christmas, that's, that's the whole family. <laughs> hey, they, they know we love them, but we, we, we got to pay these debts off. I, I ain't playing around, you know. It's going to require some balance. I like that, Todd. You still got to take your trips. You still got to, you know, enjoy your life. Don't, don't be like me and get to a place where you're like super hard. I'm, hard, I'm hardcore. Yeah, I'm hardcore. Because I'm like, man, I could, in nine years, man, we can have this thing paid off in two. <laughs> Beans and rice, ramen noodles. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> TJ, you got to eat what we eat. And no more McDonald's. That's your last McDonald's. That's the last McDonald's. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> now, think about this, though. When you're, paying, when you're, looking, when you're doing this snowball and the endurance is setting in. You, you, 12 months in, you a year and a half in. 
you know, it's going to take some endurance. Think about the scripture when you guys are going through this planning phase and, and actually doing it through faith. Second Corinthians four, verse 17 says, um, our light affliction, which is um, which is but for a moment is working f uh, for us a far more exceeding, exceeding internal weight of glory. You pay this stuff off, man. That exceeding eternal weight of glory, I mean, it's a huge weight lifted off of you. You're going to come into the sanctuary praising God, like, thank God, you know, I done paid it. You, Lord, you did it. I done called the, the creditors, and then they, they said, you know that little, that thousand dollar debt you had? You can pay it off with a hundred dollars. That ain't nothing but God. Because if it wasn't God, you'd be paying that thousand dollars still. You're going to lift off the, the exceeding weight. It might be a light affliction going through this, paying all this stuff off, but it's only for a moment. When you look at the uh, plan and you see the number of years, that's a moment in time. Amen. Imagine that moment. Imagine you know, if you don't plan it, you're going to be paying for 31 years. That's, that's, I mean, you, if you're 30 years old, you can be 60 years old by the time you get enough paying your debts off. Yeah. You're 40 years old, you know, you know, you're 30 years old, you do, you do, do, do my plan, the, the snowball, the Dave Ramsey plan, you can have it paid off by the time you're 49 years old. You can still enjoy your life. Your life affliction is just, just for a moment. And in the meantime, you're still you're gonna be getting money. You, now you got less debts. I got more money in my pocket. I got less stress. You know, I'm not coming to the sanctuary down in the dumps like, man, I'm gonna pay this bill. I'm gonna pay that bill. Now, man, the church is raising another offering. Pastor, I can't. Uh, you know, that pressure is off of you. Um, let's see here. What are we looking like on time? We are good. I got 15 minutes. We're going to get through this. Um, we'll save that. And let me see. Let's talk about, that was, that was uh, the nuts and bolts of breaking uh, the shackles of debt. Let's transition over to uh, saving for tomorrow. Now we can put together a savings plan for tomorrow. Now, let me see how far we up. We're going to finish early tonight. So this is, uh, we're closing now, but savings plan for tomorrow. There's four vital reasons you have to have a savings plan. This comes from Ecclesiastes 9, verse 11. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. All that says is, you can be LeBron James, Jeff Bezos, you can be Todd Hutchison, you can be little Bradley Bird. Time and chance happens to us all. We gotta have a savings, that means we have to have a savings plan. There's gonna be, here's, here's the first reason you need a savings plan. There's gonna be emergencies, it's gonna rain. Your car's going to, um, the tire's going to go flat. Water may come in on the roof of your house. You know, you may have a medical procedure that needs to get done, and it's going to cost some money. Emergency may come up. You know, uh, when, our, when our furnace stopped working, man, my wife, she was bugging. She was like, Todd, what are we going to do? We need to go to uh, Mom and, and, and Pastor's house and stay the night over there. Da, da, da. You know, we, we, what are we going to do about this furnace? I'm like, babe. We got X amount of thousand dollars in the emergency fund. Let's just have him replace the furnace. <laughs> and then she stopped tripping. She's like, oh, we do got an emergency fund. <laughs> My man, I, I don't want to pay all that money for, you want to be in the cold? We're going to have emergency. That's the first vital reason why we need to have a savings plan. Uh, number two, second reason to have a, a savings plan, general maintenance. I just added this to my spreadsheet um, the past couple years. We got home and car maintenance, marriage maintenance. Remember I told you about balance? We got balance, we, we got to, you know, do some nice stuff with the wifey and TJ and, uh, you know, and uh, you guys the same for your, for your spouses or, you know, significant, you know, uh, yourself. You got, you know, sometimes people that we work so hard, we, we pay all these the bills off, we, we don't even treat ourselves. Um, general maintenance. Because um, everybody knows you're going to need an oil change. Everybody knows you got to replace that filter in, in your house. Everybody knows you, you, you got to pay for these jobs. Have a savings plan for general maintenance. Second vital reason to have a savings plan. And uh, I was already there, but when TJ got here, it really hit. 
future life events. We got things like birthdays, Christmas, pastoral appreciation. For us, back in the day, we, we wanted to have a child. Now we got TJ. Everybody's got future life events that come up that you want to save and prepare for. And um, have it, this, is a, this is a vital reason why you should have a savings. You don't have a savings plan when things come up. Birthdays come up, Christmas come up, pastoral appreciation come up. You should have been saving for it. You, you knew that was coming up. You knew, knew that birthday was coming up. You knew the anniversary was coming up. You, you knew the savings plan. Third vital reason. Fourth vital, vital reason. Probably the most important vital reason to have a savings plan. Not to not go back in debt. Amen. You know, if you plan, you know, if you don't plan, you basically plan to fail. You plan to go right back to the, the, the debt. You plan to go back to like, I need to use that credit card to pay for this because I, I didn't even save any money for it. Um, now, types of accounts used for short term to medium term savings. I'm going to explain to your advantages and disadvantages. There's, um, of course, ways you can save. You got your underneath your mattress. You know, some old school, you know, and then you got regular checking account. Probably not really a good place to save money long term because interest rates are rising. Uh, the money that sits in your checking account is not earning enough interest. To, uh, I mean, but you save $1,000 a day. Next year is probably only worth $800 worth of stuff that you can buy. Even though it's still $1,000, you only can buy gas is at $5 uh, a gallon now. And I hear that it's going to actually go up and could possibly um, hover around six, $7 for a while. Crude oil is like $140 a barrel. I read all these financial briefs and stuff. And I'm like, our gas price is about to be high for a while. So, you know, regular savings account, it's okay. Just like the regular checking account. Then there's money market accounts. These are a little bit better. They actually give you a higher interest rate than you can get with savings. Shop around, look for money market accounts. That's where we keep our emergency funds because we can actually take from it if there is an emergency and not have a penalty. Then there's, of course, certificate deposit, CDs. We've got one for TJ, and uh, since I got uh, a special military bank, uh, we earn 3% interest on that CD, but we can't touch it for a whole year. Now, they got a little caveat. I can only put up the $3,000 in it that would give me 3% interest on. If I want 3% uh, on more than $3,000, I've got to open up another bank account with the wifey, so she's doing that. So we, we earn 3% on, on, on two $3,000 accounts, and then we got stocks that we got for TJ as well. But... Um, those are ways you can save money. Of course, people put money in Cash App. There's a way you can save money, and then whenever you get, get some money, oh, let me just Cash App you this, or you can even get the Cash App card and be able to use that as, as a way to save money. Uh, PayPal, you know, all kind of ways. But how much time we got? We good, 51. So last three keys. Three keys to, save, uh, success, to successfully save money. Key number one, your savings plan must Become a habit. This comes from Luke 16, verse 10. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much, and he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Savings must become a principal habit that you do. Every single month I get paid, man, um, I'm, I'm so far ahead of the game now. The money that I have in my account now is for July's bills. I already paid June's bills with last month's money. When June 1st hit, just to make sure my spreadsheet lines up, I waited, I had the money. I waited till June 1st hit so I can go to my spreadsheet. Okay, June 1, pay off, I, I, I saved, put money in TJ's savings account, put money in TJ's investment account, put money for our, our uh, 15th year anniversary, put money away for our annual anniversary, put money away for her 40th birthday, put money away for her birthday coming up on June 18th, I put all this money away June 1st. It must, it must become a habit. I, I put all this stuff away, then I pay all the bills. I pay every single bill June 1st. Everything's paid. I'm not worried about nothing until July. It must become a habit. If you struggle in this area, and some people do, set up automatic deposits. My wife does it. You, you struggle with saving? Set up an automatic deposit. Hey, deposit 250 into my money market account. Deposit another 250 into my other savings account. Move the money here, move the money there. That way, you, you out of the equation because you, you ain't disciplined, you ain't obedient. Set up, <laughs> set up, set up automated processes. We got, we got technology. We got, we got technology. Be faithful about it. The second key to successfully save money. 
clearly define each savings goal and save specifically for that goal. Notice I said we, my wife's got a 40th birthday. I'm trying to put at least $3,000 in that. Right now, according to my rate, it's, uh, it's $81.25 a month that I have to put in that. And by, by the time we get up to her birthday, she's going to have $3,000 in there. Now, she, she already got money in there because we already ran out the whole lot of stuff. But save specifically for a goal and don't use it for anything else other than that goal you set it for. Pro this comes from Proverbs 21, verse 20. There is desirable treasure and oil in, in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man squanders it. If you don't specifically set the goals, you know, you're going to squander it. But, oh, man, something came up. Babe, I'm going to take this money for your 40th your birthday and, and use it to get my new graphics card. No, I'm so funny. <laughs> but um, then, let me see here. But, you know, I got, we got vacation fun. Everybody's going to have all these fun. Look, this is what you can do. Think of the dream. Dream a little bit. Vacation fun, wedding anniversary, Christmas, pastoral appreciation, children's life milestone achievements. For TJ, the dude's, he's already got bread. Um, <laughs> by the time he hits 18, I'll be, he'll be like, uh, Daddy, I want to get a car. Well, you go out and you work, and uh, whatever you get, I'll match you. I'll match you. I already got the match. He, he probably, he probably, I don't know he got. He probably got a little over $4,000 in save weight right now. But by the time he get 18, with his brokerage account and the money markets and all that stuff, dude, Milestone achievements. You don't want to get to somebody's graduation or somebody says, TJ says, well, TJ says, Daddy, I don't want to go to college. I want to go to a vocational trade school. Can, Daddy, can you, can you help fund my future? Sure, son. I've been saving for you since you was born. Amen. And, and you do that. This is why we save. You know, do, do car down payment, house down payment, emergencies, investments. This is the reason why we save. Third and final key um, to uh, successfully saving. Um, Third key is build a savings plan. You know, you got to build it. I use a spreadsheet called YNAB. You can use pen and paper. You can use Excel spreadsheets. But build the savings plan. You, you make it a habit. You define each savings goal. And you only use the money specifically for, that, specifically for that goal. And then thirdly, you build the plan and you faithfully follow it. That's simple. That is our conclusion. Um, I wish I had printouts, but I got a, a thing you guys you can pass it around. If you guys want to, um, like we do, we dream, you want to learn how to take a $5,000 dream vacation. I don't know why she wants to go to them islands or whatever. But uh, there, I made this spreadsheet. All you do, you start off with $4 the first week. Second week, you do $8. You just add, you double it. You go from four, one week, the next week you save $8. You just put it away in an account somewhere. By the time you get to week 26, you're saving $104. The, uh, week 27, you save $108 that week. By the time you get down to it, you're saving up to $208 you know, a week. And then, but, but by the end, you'll have $5,500 saved in a year's time. Mm -hmm. Just by starting with four, doing, um, then go eight, then 12, you know. So take, take a I'll go ahead and take a picture of that. And um, we're gonna wrap up. Uh, I'm gonna finish off in prayer. You can pass that uh, tablet there around if you want once you get your picture. Um, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, uh, for your word, for uh, helping us, Lord, when it comes to breaking the shackles of debt and learning how to save for tomorrow, Lord. And Lord, uh, next week uh, we will be talking for giving and uh, talking about giving, Lord. And I'm looking forward to that because it's, it's a vital uh, lesson when it comes to our finances for life, Lord. And we give you all the praise and glory, Lord, uh, for what you're doing through me, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, go ahead and stop the screen. Amen. But yeah, that's just a, a simple sheet that show you how to save five thousand dollars. Just a, a weekly plan, and then you can you can automate that, or you can mainly just save it every single month. And by the time you get to a whole year, you can take a fifty-five hundred dollar vacation. Oh, questions? Well, I have a comment. I just want to say this. This was a really good lesson. And I was listening to a, a, a speaker talking about something similar about investing in your kids, and in the black community, you know, we don't always get a head start. Right. We start off like having to figure out at 18 how to buy our own car. So you already start off at this disadvantage. And so it's great that we're learning stuff like this now because mm -hmm. our people need to understand it's, it's not the man after you, it's sometimes the behavior that are passed down from generation to generation. Right. And we're trying to look good 
not realizing that you know your kid's going to graduate, so yeah. why not start saving now? You know your kid's going to need a car one day, so why not start saving now? You know your kid may.